Uh, each frequency band is associated with positive and negative characteristics. Everybody wants alpha. That's nice. Everybody wants to have some beta. It's particularly useful if you're trying to think. Everybody would like to have delta, especially if you'd like to sleep. But having delta when you're trying to do math and having beta when you're trying to go to sleep, not very conducive to that state, right? So, <laughs> you end up having some symptom presentation. So, each frequency band is associated with both positive and negative characteristics. And now this is a side, uh, or a bottom line, which is sort of geared directly at neurofeedback. So if you're not doing neurofeedback, it's, you know, not really applicable. But the idea of neurofeedback is a couple of things. You know, one, there's this camp that there is something wrong with you, and therefore we need to correct the aberrant thing, whatever it is. You have too much of this or too little of that. We need to fix it. You need to fix it by making more or less. There's also the notion that really more than that, in my opinion, is this goal of flexibility or balance, right? It's not that you necessarily need more or less right you know, of this all the time. You need more or less right now for that particular state. So if I'm asking you to engage in a task, you want to be able to produce more beta and engage in the task, produce, suppress the slow rhythm. Where if you're now the day is done and you're in your room having a wine and watching Seinfeld, you need to have less of that beta and more of the slow stuff. So there's about this flexibility and, and this balancing of the frequencies together. It's very common for people to try to get into a theta state in order to have, uh, sort of be able to think outside the box. You know those people who always have brilliant ideas but they can probably never implement any of them because they're in that state. Uh, and they continue to be in that state. Uh, Thomas Edison would sit with his arm uh, on an armchair holding a, a ball with a tin pan on the floor. And as he became drowsy, he found that he had really nice, brilliant ideas. But what would happen is he would go off to sleep and he would forget them. So he would hold the ball and as he began to get drowsy and have these great ideas, the muscles would weaken when he went to sleep. The ball would fall and hit the pan, immediately waking him up and he would write down what he was thinking just before that. And then he would do the practice over and over. He was actually doing neurofeedback, only he was using a mechanical operation of his muscle tone to keep him in that state. You can see frontal alpha in ADD, frontal alpha in depression, frontal alpha in dementia, frontal alpha in anxiety, frontal alpha in OCD. So maybe frontal alpha isn't really a subset of any one of those, but it's kind of a basic failure mode of the brain, as opposed to a, a DSM subgroup within each of these diagnostic categories because quite honestly you're seeing the same data cut across multiple diagnostic groupings and uh, uh, obviously it's not to have frontal alpha isn't a subtype of ADD it's not a subtype of depression it's not a subtype of anxiety or OCD it's an EEG signature of a failure mode in the brain here they did uh, medication prediction uh, they there's only one kind of OCD in the DSM that's, that's this the one thing uh, there's only one kind it's not subgrouped but in the EEG Pritchett used cluster analysis to identify two clusters one is an alpha cluster the other one is a slow cluster of theta delta mix well, the slow cluster, less than 15% of them responded to the SSRI. The alpha cluster, about 85% of them responded to the SSRI. The low voltage slow EEG, again, is, a, is a, a toxic or metabolic variant, but the low voltage fast variant is the over arousal. Uh, obviously for the slow, we do metabolic support, nutraceuticals, uh, but for low voltage fast, it's over arousal. Uh, and uh, here, simply uh, the uh, penicillin type protocol for alpha theta uh, with an, an SMR prime to get them a little bit rhythmic ends up working very nicely. And in the application of addiction, um, there's a white paper, that, that's a 2008 white paper that actually uh, suggests that addiction as an application area we can claim probably efficacious as a, a level of efficacy.